Welcome back. You're still tuned into Health Matters on uh, the Medicine Box on CNBC TV 18. Well, Dr. Menon, you know, I'm going to come to you about women's symptoms because it's very vague when it comes to heart disease, cardiac disease, and many people think that it's a man's disease and not women. What would you recommend to women? I think uh, women in the, in, in the premenopausal uh, um, stage are usually... Uh, uh, a, a little less uh, uh, prone to develop heart diseases, but once they reach menopause or the, pre the immediate premenopausal stage, the, as the estrogen levels go down, they have an equal risk, if not greater risk than men, to develop heart diseases. Their symptoms are often discounted because mm -hmm. the male, and traditionally because what happens is the males take predominance over uh, the ladies in Indian society. A lot of time, ladies' symptoms are not taken cognizance of and they remain untreated to a large extent. The symptoms usually are the same. They are at a much higher risk if they have diabetes. They are at much higher risk if they are smokers. And they are at much higher risk if they have a family history. Mm. And typically what we also have seen, if the mother, the lady of the family has had heart diseases, the chances of the lady transmitting the disease to the children are much higher. Mm. And that is something which we have seen in practice, though we, have, we don't have any data on it. And the, sim and the symptoms are also a little vague because the, they, they typically have symptoms more at rest, not so much on exertion. Very often because of uh, obesity and inactivity, their breathlessness is not taken cognizance of. Mm. And a lot of the symptoms get br brushed under the carpet. But beyond the, beyond the menopausal uh, group, they are as uh, uh, prone to heart disease or probably more than an average Indian male. Okay. Well, talking about that, uh, you know, the other set which stands out when it comes to cardiac issues is the younger athletes running the marathon, somebody working out in the gym who does it routinely, a celebrity who, or a person who's at a concert, collapses and uh, dies of a heart attack. Uh, why is that? They're doing routine activities. Why are they just collapsing? Uh, so very quickly, in general, when someone is below 35, usually the cause of death are things like cardiomyopathy, etc., which Dr. Menon had mentioned. It's not really heart attack mm -hmm. as a general rule of thumb. And above 35, it's most commonly a heart attack. Now, please remember that whoever dies suddenly, it's not that they were healthy the day before the exercise, right? The blockage is like... Think of it as a volcano. Mm. It's sitting out there and one day it erupts. So that sudden bout of exertion, excitement, causes the volcano to erupt. It's the final trigger, so to speak. So there was heart disease brewing, but that exertion did not cause a heart attack. It was just the final trigger that led to it. Okay. There are many people who want to run marathons now, even in their 40s. What are the screening tests that you would recommend to them before they start that? So check all your risk factors as we've been talking all along in the show. Go and meet your doctor, meet a cardiologist, meet a sports doctor who understands what you're about to embark on and he or she will suggest a, a slew of tests, at least your basic blood test, a basic stress test, 2D echo. These are some of the common tests, but talk to your doctor of what's appropriate for you. A CT of the heart, that's what's been uh, recommended now for some athletes. So that becomes an interesting, that, that's a bit of an area where your doctor needs to decide. I don't think each and every person needs to do a CT angio. Who needs to do it? depends on your history, family history, symptoms, risk factors, etc. So you really need to talk to your doctor before doing that. Okay, Dr. Menon, what are the basic tests that you would recommend to both men and women when it comes to cardiac care and by what age and the frequency as well? So once you're, if you have a strong family history mm -hmm. of heart disease, then I would say that by the age, by the time, uh, by the time you're 30, start getting your routine bloods done. Mm -hmm. Uh, once you're about, like uh, Ashish said, you know, about in the range of 35 or so, you can do a stress test, uh, which is a typically a treadmill test, which is the simplest of all the tests that you can do, to look at your, uh, the, the heart response to exercise. And that gives you a general idea of how, what, what your heart health is. Um, you can check your cholesterol values. You can check your, uh, there, there are certain tests for lipoprotein A. There are certain tests for homocysteine. There are certain tests for apolipoproteins. These are all risk factors for developing coronary disease in the future. Mm. So if you start checking them by the time they're 35 or 40, you probably will have some idea of where you're going in terms of uh, the probability of developing heart disease. Okay. What is the linkage of COVID-19 to heart disease? Well, COVID-19 was an inflammatory disease. Uh, the process of atherosclerosis that develops blockages is also an inflammatory disease. Mm. So prob we still don't know what COVID has done. I don't think any, any one of us is very clear about how it, it did affect the entire body. But we did see a much higher incidence of clot formation 
mm. heart attacks with clot formation, younger heart attacks, younger people getting cardiac uh, this thing. I think it's probably a part of the entire inflammatory panel that was uh, that, that was there uh, mm. with, with, with COVID. And I think it's still left behind a certain residue. Mm. And probably over the next few years, we'll know what actually COVID has done to our entire population. All right. Well, we have a couple of queries coming from our viewers. So I'm just going to uh, shoot them at you all. Uh, Dr. Contractor, I'm going to start with you. For healthy individuals, what is the exercise which is recommended as well as diet? Start with walking. Just be more active. Start with walking. Once you start walking, then let's look at doing something more. In terms of diet, Keep your quantity of food under control such that your weight is okay and it should be fine. Otherwise, we can go into great detail, which we won't right now. What about supplements? What would you recommend in terms of supplements for heart health? I don't think routine supplementation is required. If on an individual level you have certain things like Dr. Men Menon mentioned, like homocysteine, for example, then we could recommend some B supplements. But there isn't a across-the-board heart health supplement which I would recommend. Okay. 10,000 steps, is it necessary? It's necessary to get more active. So find out where you are today and let's just try and get better. If you're at two, try for four instead of 10, so right? You try need to do 10,000. You need to do research has shown somewhere between seven and nine is the sweet spot. Okay. Uh, gadgets, do you think that's a great way to track your heart health or do you think that it's anxiety inducing? So people, I use the gadget. People who like data and will take good feedback from it, by all means do it. But mm. everyone doesn't have to do it. Mm. Don't, get, don't get obsessed with it. Yeah. Okay, but is it important to probably track your heart rate as well as your steps constantly and your heart health with gadgets? Would you recommend that? I, I, if, if you ask me, I wouldn't recommend it uh, in a general basis because it increases the anxiety of, 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 of people. Mm. It's good to track your heart rate because there are certain studies that show that slower the heart rate, the long, the, your, your longevity is longer. It's good to see the amount of steps that you do. But at the same time, if you're going to walk 5,000 steps at a leisurely pace, uh, it doesn't make sense. If you need to do those steps, you need to do it at a faster pace and have uh, spend some energy doing it. Okay. Now, we spoke about the signs and symptoms of heart attack uh, in men and women. But what if somebody else is getting a heart attack? Uh, what would you recommend the, the person does? I think uh, typically if, you, if you're sure, I mean, the, the basic problem is diagnosis of a heart attack. Suppose, I mean, if you give the wrong medicine at the wrong time, it can worsen the patient's condition. Mm. The best thing to do if you have a person having severe chest pain, sweating, is to take him to the nearest doctor, the nearest hospital, mm. and, uh, and, and, and administer the, 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 the treatment. If you cannot, uh, then at least just make sure that you clear, clear the air around him, uh, make, make him lie down comfortably, and uh, uh, get, get help wherever possible. Mm. There is a tablet called Sobitrate, mm. which can be given under the tongue in, in case of an acute heart attack, but those tablets can be deleterious. If the blood pressure is on the lower side, it can drop the blood pressures even more. Mm. The other simplest thing that you can do if in a suspected heart attack is get a aspirin tablet, dissolve it in water, and make the person drink that water. Okay. So that aspirin can help you till that time being, till the patient reaches the hospital. Okay, all right. Uh, so those are the SOS medicines, and that was basically my next question. Just before we wrap up, an immediate lifestyle change for good heart health, which you would recommend. Dr. Men first. Good sleep, exercise, and a moderation in diet. Dr. Contractor. So I'll just call it A, B, C, D, E. A is activity, B is blood pressure, C is cholesterol, D is diet, diabetes, and do not smoke, and E is exercise. All right, Dr. Menon, as well as Dr. Contractor, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining in and speaking to CNBC TV 18 about cardiac care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us over.